Hello everyone, welcome to MATLAB programming course. Today we're going to start a new chapter and the focus will be to familiarize ourselves with new functions which are frequently used in MATLAB programming. And these functions are often a common between different majors, so they're really important and we're going to kind of familiarize ourselves with them and learn how we can use them in our project and programming. So let's get started. We all have learned in math classes that the factorial function actually can be activated by this exclamation mark but um, not in MATLAB. For example, if you type five and exclamation mark, and it's gonna be like an error there. So in order to use factorial in MATLAB programming, what we need to do is to type factorial. As you see, the auto completion feature comes up and it's just very intuitive, like factorial n. So we pass the number that we want. For example, if you want to find the factorial of three, so we pass it as an argument in there and just hit enter, it's six. We can just uh, try like six, which is 720 or any number that you like. We need this for the calculus part that we're gonna work and cover, especially in sequences. With factorial add away, another important function is square root. It's very much used in engineering field and you're gonna work with it on a daily basis and so we need to know how to do it. There are actually two ways to get a square root out of numbers. So the first one is using a SQRT. Square root is a SQRT function and if you pass a number like nine and hit enter, you see that the number is produced. This is the way that we, we can uh, get the square root. Let's try another one. Let's go with 49, so this seven. But what happens if we pass something which is not a perfect square root, like 40? You see that the number is going to be produced anyways. MATLAB has no problem with finding square root of any number which you can pass as an argument. As I told you, another way to get a square root is through using power and a caret function. If I want to find the square root of, let's say, 9, I can say... 9 to power half, which is exactly equivalent to second root of 9, square root of 9. If I do that, you see that the result is produced. Let's go with 81 and the same thing and also 73 and the result is produced. It is a very convenient way to find the square root of numbers. However, the SQRT function is more common in engineering field. It's, it's good to kind of adopt this notion, especially later when we start programming. It's very useful. Also, I encourage you to investigate more about the square root in here, the MATLAB help. And you see that there are different parts and different sorts, so you can click on it and just investigate which part you can uh, use for your programming. Using MATLAB's help is a part of learning MATLAB programming and I cannot emphasize this more. Reviewing MATLAB's help is one of the best ways that you can master MATLAB programming. Now you might think, what if we want to find the third, fourth, or in general, nth root of a number, not, not just the square root? Well, uh, there is a function in MATLAB and we're going to use that. This function is called nth root, okay? And, through. and also, let me let me use the MATLAB help system here just to kind of familiarize ourselves with that too. If I say nth root, as you see, if you click on it, uh, actually, you might not be able to see it. It's out of my uh, recording area. Let me bring it here. Okay. So the syntax for nth root function is that you type, you type it like nth root and pass two arguments to it. And the first one is going to be the number that we are we're searching for. For example, nine, whatever, what a number you, you choose and you want to find the the nth root, you pass it here. And the second one, which is n, indicates what root you're searching, which what's the number of the root you're searching for. For example, you're searching for the third root, fourth root, nth root, whatever, you pass it here. So let's learn it by doing an example. 
So ant root, I type it ant root, and we need two numbers. Let's go with 27 and, okay. So we wanted to find the third root of 27. What is that number? Which if we multiply it three times, we can get 27. So if I hit enter, the result is three. Okay, how about 81? So you see that it doesn't need to be like the perfect cube root or fourth root. We can totally find any number that you're interested in. So as you see, you can find the numbers very, very easily. Like the square root, we can find the square root of a number. Let's do this, one third. And uh, we can use the caret sign for any number that you like. You can definitely get the same result as we get here, but it's kind of not very readable. And also it is very good that we familiarize ourselves with the functions because it's not like that you always write the program. There will be times when you read others programmers work and you need to know the functions they've used. So just in, keep in mind that if you forgot how to use the functions and you didn't remember the syntax, you can always use the malaf help functions here. And if you just, for any reason, you didn't find it or you couldn't find it or didn't want to use that, you can totally just uh, raise the power to a fractional number and get the root. It would be great if you can combine what we learned before with those things that we learned today and practice using MATLAB extensively. One of the things that we can do this way is, let me clear up the screen. Let's define a function, a number like um, nine, and then I can definitely define a new variable and call this QRT of X, and then plus 45, and you see that the result that is produced. Or we can do something even more fun, like a skewRT of a number, which is going to be a big number, and the, we find the result. And we can find the symbolic skewRT of the same thing, 89333. Okay, so if we do that, we need more, one more. The matter is going to is going to give us the result in a symbolic format because we've passed it the symbolic function we just got the result in symbolic we can also find uh, the pretty uh, answer and if you do that you you can see that the results are reflected back in a more like textbook format so yeah totally you can just play with it and convert the result in different formats as you like. Uh, for example, if you want to find the decimal format, we can go with double answer, and it will just bring bring the result in a decimal format. So I encourage you to kind of use your imagination and try different things because that's that's a very powerful way to learn any new programming language, including MATLAB. And meanwhile, you can learn a lot.